Do you ever wish the computer would just tell you which notes you need to play? Well, stick with me and I'll show you how to do that in Cubase today. So Cubase has a lot of features that are sort of underneath the hood that make music composition super duper easy. And one of those is the chord track. And there's a bunch of chord track tutorials. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite uses of the chord track and some uses that I don't use, but you might find useful. So let's just record something in and I'll show you how the chord track works on that level. <laughs> not bad for not having a click. Let's quantize that. We have those chords and I happen to know what those chords are. Uh, but what if you didn't? You know, what if you're just, you know, you play by feel, you play by sound, you don't know what those chords are? Well, with a chord track set up, it couldn't be easier to figure out what the chords are. So we'll go into the key editor here. And what we'll do is we'll select this. And it says the chord right here is G, which is cool. So we'll just add that to the chord track. And this chord is C, we'll add that to the chord track. And this chord is D over A, we'll add that to the chord track. And this chord is C, we'll add that. And of course this is G, we'll add that. And we look back and we have our chords added, which is nice. So this is cool because it can work uh, if you know what you're playing and you want to find out what chords you're playing and then add them to, to a chord track. But it can also work the other way. If you know that you want a specific chord progression, but you're not sure exactly how that works, you can put in the chord track. You can write in the notes by hitting the Alt key and then just adding chords wherever you want. But there's another secret function here, and it's like, computer, tell me what to play. Now, we know that it defaults to velocity. So each of these, I mean, I, I sort of bang down the keys, but you can, you can adjust velocity here. And the colors will change based upon how hard you play. But there's multiple modes here. Uh, there's pitch, MIDI channel, grid match. Uh, but if you use the chord track setting here on the key editor, what's awesome is once your chords are set, you have a very powerful feature. And that feature is... These are the chords and you can see they're in green because they're the actual chords. Now in chord track mode, if I add notes, green will be notes within the triad. So for a G major, the triad is G, B, D, and those are all green. But blue uh, in its default setting will be notes within the scale, the G major scale. So what we can do is we can add a little lead here. And so I could just play anything. Okay, that's good enough. And here's the thing. And I used uh, step recording for that. Uh, you can use any time that the notes are red, they're not within the scale. So we can find each one. Let me turn off step recording so I can do easier. And if you make all of the, uh, all the notes that are red, blue or green, they'll be within the scales of the defined chords that you have in your chord track. And so we can listen back to our little lead. <laughs> and so it's basically the computer telling you what notes to play. And I know that this may seem a bit like cheating, but guess what? It's not. And it can help you with much, much more complicated chord progression. So we'll back this up. Uh, we'll do F sharp diminished to 
Um, we'll just do an E major seven. And then just to complete it, we'll do A seven. And then we'll end on B So we'll, we'll put in the chords real quick, and I think what I'll want to do is make these whole notes. We'll make the length half notes. And did I have snap off when I made this section? I think I did. Cool. And so we'll set up our step recording right here. Uh, I think the first chord is F-sharp diminished, so... Uh, Did we get that? Oh. There we go. That's the uh, F sharp diminished. And then, of course, our next one was, I forget what it was in the chord track, E major 7. Uh, and then we have... A7. That one's one I can probably successfully execute. Ah. And then, uh, B minor 7. Cool. So we did those right. But even if we did them wrong, you know, it would clearly tell us that we were wrong, but we could always highlight everything and say match with the chord track, and it'll snap everything into our predefined chords. So cool. So let's listen to our little. And let's step record in another lead, why don't we? It's just so we can demonstrate this. Uh... So uh, I think I'll step record it in again at 16th notes or whatever. We'll make the length 16th. And we're all set up. So. Okay, and once we have that recorded in, I'll we'll have to take off step. Cool. So what we've done is we've just made all the notes blue and green and we know they're within the scales of our chords. So let's listen to it. Hey! And so this is just some interesting ways you can use the chord track with the chord track functionality 
uh, in your MIDI key editor menu. Uh, the chord track has a lot more uses and I could probably do multiple videos and maybe I will. I just thought, you know, if you ever wanted the computer to tell you what notes to play, if you didn't want to have to have, uh, you know, any semblance of musical theory, you can just follow the pretty colors, you know, just green and blue. If you see any red, red is bad. Let's make it blue. And you'll end up with something like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. If you have, feel free to like and subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. I'll be back with more sick content related to Cubase and other stuff. So have a good one and peace.